where fear meets exhilaration. Welcome to the world of scuba diving. Rowing but arduous sport that many are turned away from when they start learning how to do it because of the numerous hurdles. There are lots of unknowns, there are lots of hardships, and there's lots of things to learn and get comfortable with in order to enjoy scuba diving. And in this video, I want to share with you how to conquer these fears and become a better diver. Fear is a natural part of the human experience, but understanding it is the key to conquering it. When I first started getting into scuba diving, I was fortunate because I already knew how to swim. While many years later, understanding about what I do about scuba diving, I would say swimming is not a requirement to know how to scuba dive. Because when you learn how to swim, you can learn how to swim on the surface of the water, which is vastly different than when you swim under the water. And often when you're scuba diving, you will not be swimming on the surface. And when you do need to swim, you'll have your BCD and fins and you won't be swimming in a normal way anyway. But the thing is, knowing how to swim gives you an initial boost of confidence and bravery. It might sound ridiculous, but that is really what it is you will feel less fear when on top of the water. And when getting into scuba diving, so you'll be doing a lot of things in water and around water and knowing how to swim makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. So that's often why in PADI and SSI, they will require you know how to swim first. And that's only the first hurdle. I remember when I got certified, I got certified in the British Virgin Islands, kind of on a whim. I think at this island, Virgin Gorda. And my friends and I, we stayed up late reading the entire SSI book. And I remember being super overwhelmed reading that book from all the different charts, the tables, learning of all the different ways you can die, all the different procedures. It is super overwhelming. And I don't know if they've changed the curriculum since, but learning all that at once is, I forgot probably about 90% of it. And it felt definitely intimidating. So when getting into the pool and starting to go through and learning all those skills, I was definitely feeling intimidated and a little bit afraid of what I was getting into. The pool was no problem. And I think that's why generally you will start off in a pool because it is a safe environment. You'll get to know your gear a little bit. And, and after that, you'll graduate to the ocean, which with one kind of dive in the pool or at least getting to know your gear, this helps build that little bit of comfort. And then when you get to the ocean, it's the next step. They're not going to take you anywhere dangerous. And with a good instructor helping you along the way, you'll have learned the basics to stay safe and start getting into scuba diving. But even then, you will have a lot of hurdles. The first dive, you will find your ability to equalize is going to be very hard. And you're going to have to deal with trying to equalize and you're going to be super frustrated. I know I sure was. Your goggles could be leaky. You're going to start feeling a lot of claustrophobia with the rebreather. I remember for the first like five dives, I did not want to breathe out of this rebreather. I wanted to take it out and breathe normal air. You know, that's not going to happen when you're scuba diving, but you want to. And it, it just it takes a long time to feel like, OK, I'm OK with this rebreather. It keeps me alive. I want it, I want it there. You want to take it out. The and the goggles and the whole thing with the goggles, they kind of restrict your view and they feel like you're in a box and that just increases the claustrophobia. But I assure you, it gets better because I stuck with it. I kept going and within five to 10 dives, it got better. I started feeling less claustrophobic. I started focusing on bigger and bigger things. If you've ever learned how to drive, the best way to describe the situation is when you start learning how to drive. The first day you're on the road, it's scary as hell. There's all sorts of things going on. There's people honking at you and there's just, there's a lot happening. But after 10 drives, after 100 drives, eventually things are gonna feel a lot more automated. You have to focus on things and now you can start enjoying driving and having your mind free. And for scuba diving, when your mind is free, that's when the fun of scuba diving starts opening up. So I urge you, you have to kind of get through that five to 10 dives and start learning those basic skills and start getting rid of that initial fear of a lot of the unknown things, the basic foundation of scuba diving that it brings. And if you can get through that small hurdle, it starts opening up and it gets a lot better because 
there's a lot of things to explore and see and you probably won't even see or explore those until you start getting those core foundation down and becoming comfortable with it. So make sure you acknowledge and accept your fears. They are a part of the journey. As mentioned, there's claustrophobia, which is a common experience when you start diving. There's the fear of drowning, which uh, when you start diving and start getting more feeling that, hey, I got this, I, I can drive, I can dive, then it starts feeling like I'm not gonna drown because I have control of the situation. And there's sea life, which honestly, you won't ever have control of the sea life, but when you start diving, you will actually find that most all sea life is scared of you. And so you'll start learning techniques so that you don't scare away the wildlife so they can actually see it. So that's usually not too much of a concern, especially starting out. There's a tens of thousands of experienced divers out there, dive masters and divers that go scuba diving across the world in through their young to older years and they're still going strong. Thousands of dive. And if there's people like that and have the confidence to keep going, you can too. So seek out the advice of those experienced divers. Get to know your dive masters, your local dive community. You can ask questions and all these things will help power you through your field. In the depths of uncertainty lies discovery. Let's explore the mysteries that lie beneath the surface. Going back to that driving example, the more you drive, the better you feel. And it's the same thing with diving. And I will say diving can feel just as dangerous as driving, especially starting off. And so going back to my own fear and things that I was struggling with in terms of air time, I, I was like the worst in my group. I, everyone had to come up with because I was running out of air. I had absolute shit buoyancy. I had a bad gear failure with some rental gear where the O-ring popped on the seal of my tank releasing my entire air tank within, I don't know, it was like 90 seconds. And I could just see on my air gauge, it was just going down as maybe 20 meters by the time I was freaking out. And, and that stuck with me for a little while. <laughs> I survived obviously, but those kind of things, when you're starting off, will stick with you. However, I've never been one to quickly walk away from anything. And when I see a challenge, I, like challenge and i know not, not everyone is like me who stares challenge in the face and this runs right at it but i guarantee with this thing as with driving the more you do it the better you get and so with scuba diving you will not ever 100 percent know everything that's going to happen when you're in scuba diving but the fortunate thing is there's always a plan so as I'm encountering things and seeing things that cause me a little bit of fear or anxiety of any kind, I try to research those things. I ask my instructor or my dive master about those things and I try to become more familiar with those things and, it, and understand them more. Because the more, because often the more I understand something, the more I'm going to feel less anxious from it. For example, a lot of divers, when they first start, are very afraid of sharks. But how can you overcome those fears of sharks? The best way is to dive with sharks. And with that said, I wouldn't advise you go find a great white and try to jump in the water with it. That's probably not what you want to start with. Go with reef diving. Reef sharks are fairly timid and they're not aggressive. They're smaller and what I call the gardeners of the reef. If you find some reef sharks, they're generally perfect for getting familiar with them and especially nurse sharks, which are super friendly. And if you do enough dives around those, you will start feeling, hey, sharks are not so bad. And don't stop there because there are some sharks that honestly you should feel a little bit intimidated by, but they'll feel a lot less intimidating the more you understand sharks and how they behave and how they, they react to your environment. And even those sharks are often very safe to scuba divers. And if you look up the statistics of how often sharks attack divers, you will find it's very limited, it's very small, it does happen and it's very unfortunate. But when a shark can identify you in the water, seeing your bubbles, seeing you in a group, you are quite intimidating. 
And when you start seeing the sharks and how they react with you and the other divers, you will start seeing you are intimidating to them and you will get more comfortable and you will be able to observe their behaviors, their patterns and continue to dive. Another common fear is fear of the deep. What happens when you can't see the bottom? Now, this is quite eerie and I think it's a natural reaction because everyone is afraid of falling. In this situation, you kind of are falling or at least you can't really tell you're falling. In fact, if you go deep enough where no light penetrates, it kind of feels like you're in outer space and you can't, even if you have a flashlight, it means nothing because there's nothing to shine the light on, which is really an eerie feeling. I don't, honestly, you'll just find it's darkness as far as you can see. There's nothing there because you are in the abyss. And there's certainly a lot of eerie things that live in the abyss. But often when you're scuba diving, you will stay in the sunlight. But when you have control of where you are in scuba diving and you feel comfortable with that control, all it takes is just swimming closer to the surface. You don't need to go down into an abyss. You're not going to fall into an abyss because you have control. And so you just have that comfort and confidence that you know how to drive and you know how to dive. See, I'm going back to that example, but it's really what it takes. You, once you have the control, you can go where you want. And honestly, in that abyss, there are some quite some eerie things in there, but they stay in the abyss and they don't like the daylight. <laughs> and so make sure to get out of there before night falls and then you're good to go. But I am certainly am super happy that I stuck with scuba diving. I've seen amazing things from the rainbow reefs of the feet to the amazing biodiversity of Raja Ampat, the ripping currents of Komodo and the beautiful sea oasis of Socorro and tons more. I guarantee once you start scuba diving, if you love travel and adventure, your world of travel and adventure is going to trip when you start scuba diving because there is so much to do underneath the ocean. Maybe it's better you don't get started with scuba diving because there is just too much to see. But seriously, once you start embracing the unknown as an opportunity for adventure and experience, your world is going to open up. Dive into the new environments with an open mind and carry on. Learn along the way. Reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, and constantly be trying to Push your comfort zone, but not overexert yourself in a way that you're putting yourself in dangerous territory, but always trying to grow and learn in your own way at your own pace and keep learning. And as you learn, trust in your training and equipment to navigate unfamiliar underwater terrain safely. Preparation is the antidote to fear. Let's dive into strategies, how to overcome obstacles, and make sure you have a safe and rewarding diving experience. If you hadn't noticed before, I have a bit of a fear of dark water. I remember one time I was free swimming over a lake and I was swimming and swimming and I could see the bottom of the lake with my eyes and that gave me comfort. But immediately I got to this point where it was just dark blue and I kept wondering to myself and I kept wondering to myself, wigging myself out, what could be down there? What could, what is beyond what I could see? And honestly, there probably wasn't anything I need to be concerned with, but because I couldn't see the bottom, because it was just dark, I was stricken with fear and I needed to go back to the shore. And I immediately did. With scuba diving, that took a while to get over. And my first night dive, I remember, this is nuts. How am I gonna do this? Especially diving off the boat and just getting into the pitch black water. I was freaking out. I remember immediately, you just can't see anything. I had a pretty powerful torch or flashlight that I had as a scuba diver, but still, it just wasn't enough. I always, I was, I was starting to think of all the different things that could be there. And honestly, at nighttime, there was a lot of stuff that could be there. But you know what? I stuck with it. I did that whole dive and it was a fantastic experience. There are some things that helped though. For one, it was a dive we had did earlier that day. I knew the layout of the terrain and I knew roughly what was kind of there. So it was kind of cool to see it in nighttime where 
frankly, a lot of stuff has changed. A lot of nightlife has come and it's different than the day life. And it was actually more active when we were there. And we saw some sharks swimming through the reefs looking for small little fish. The lobsters were out and a lot of things were hunting. It was full of life and really beautiful to see. But I wouldn't have saw any of it if I didn't stick it out. And I told myself, a lot of people do night dives. And that comforted me to some degree. If others do it, I can too. And so I just need to stick it out and see how it goes. Maybe I just, maybe if I write it out, I'll enjoy it. Now I was fortunate that I enjoyed the first night dive. Sometimes it takes a few people, a few more dives to start enjoying them. Because as I said, sometimes when you first start diving, you're focused on all these things and you're just getting distracted and there's too much going on that you can enjoy it. But of course, the more you do it, you start focusing on things and enjoying it more. And so it's important to know when you can start focusing on the smaller things, the things that are happening around you, instead of just trying to survive, you start thriving. That's the difference and when you can start enjoying further we had a dive plan we started off with our dive master we knew roughly the route we were going to take we started at a time where there would be minimal to no tide and we knew what we would see and we had a good idea of what we would see and so we stuck to the plan and that helped a lot not to mention at this point when i started night diving i had already a good 40 dives under my belt and that gave me a lot of good foundation to my scuba skills that I wasn't worried about that foundation as much. Of course, you know, buoyancy control takes a good amount of time and maybe I was either earning slower or faster than others, I, I can't tell. But I was not perfect buoyancy. I, was, I still needed to focus a lot on buoyancy. But the point is, I wasn't being distracted all that much with the foundation skills. And so when I was trying to push those limits of night dive, being night dive is probably more extreme than a normal dive, I had already built some foundation and learned before I jumped into night diving. And this made night diving all the more easier and enjoyable for me. And it would for you as well. So again, you have to work up to those more extreme things before literally diving in to the deep end. So paying attention to those dive briefings, working your way up to these harder experiences, being curious along the way, filling the gaps of your skills and trying to improve where you can will all help build that confidence and comfort into those situations. And so when things do go wrong, and they will go wrong, I guarantee it, it's not a matter of if, but when. You have to be prepared for those things. And so with all those foundations and easing yourself into these things, you will be able to also practice along the way a bunch of emergency procedure preparation, which I highly encourage you do with your dive buddy almost every other dive. And they don't take long. And just practicing that, especially whenever you're doing a check dive, or a dive after a long period of time, just do this with your partner. It'll be, you'll be happy you did it and it builds that confidence. So if something does go wrong on, a, on any dives, you'll be ready for it. And these things might just include taking off all your gear and swapping it with your partner and deploying your SMB and communicating with your dive buddy, your comfort and how much distance that they should be at any given point, just in case something goes wrong. Scuba diving isn't just about exploring the depths. It's about confronting your fears, embracing the unknown, and finding that balance in pursuit of adventure. There is one common fear that I didn't fully address in this video, and that is current diving, which I have a perfect solution for you next. Check out this next video that will help build your comfort and knowledge around current diving, and you'll be handling that current with confidence in no time.